This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for May 11, 2023, man said to be of unsound mind killed by beryllium guard. A man said to be of unsound mind was shot and killed by a beryllium security guard in Morante Bay on Wednesday afternoon after he approached two of them with what later turned out to be an imitation firearm. The incident occurred minutes after 2 p.m. at the intersection of West Street and South Street in the vicinity of the Morante Bay market. According to Superintendent Allison Byfield of the Morante Bay Police Division, Two beryllium guards had finished stocking a Scotiabank automated banking machine when they were approached by a man while walking towards their vehicle. They warned him not to come closer. He stepped to them and raised an object in his hand that resembled a firearm. As a result, one of the guards fired a shot in his direction. He was injured and taken to the Princess Margaret Hospital, said the police superintendent. The superintendent confirmed that the man was carrying an imitation firearm. The deceased, known as a Chiching Ching or Chu Chu, was taken to the Princess Market Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Guards employed to beryllium have been held up and robbed of millions of dollars in recent incidents. Popular meat shop operator fatally shot in Mount Salem, St. James. A man was gone down outside his meat shop in Mount Salem, St. James, yesterday afternoon. He is a Clive Lawson who resided in the community. It is reported that about 4.30 p.m., the popular meat shop operator was standing outside his business establishment, which is located along the main road in Mount Salem, when gunmen in a vehicle drove up and opened fire. Lawson was shot multiple times. He is the third person to be killed this week in Mount Salem, which has been under a zone of special operations since 2017. Men killed following a gun attack on a female student. For the second time this week, crime plague the St. James was hit with a double murder as two men were killed in a brazen attack in Canaan District in the Adelphi Police District yesterday morning. The killing of the two men is believed to be an act of reprisal for a 12-year-old schoolgirl who was shot and injured in the neighboring Somerton community while traveling as a pillion on a motorcycle. The two men who were killed a gangland style have been identified as a 30-year-old Andre Powerman Brown and a 24-year-old Romain Ridim Foot Melville, who both reside in Canaan District. The injured student, whose identity has not been revealed, is now nursing a gunshot wound in hospital. According to reports, about 7.30 a.m., the injured student, who resides in the Somerton District and is a student at the William Nave High School in Trelawney, was reportedly being transported to school on the motorcycle of a relative when they were ambushed by armed men who opened gunfire on them. The student was shot in her upper body, while the relative who jumped from the motorcycle and ran was not injured. The wounded student was transported to the hospital, where she was admitted in a stable condition. About 8.30 a.m., while the police were processing the shooting scene, a group of men, who were reportedly armed with M16 assault rifles, traveled via a back road, which leads from Somerton into Canaan, and carried out the fatal attack on Brown and Melville. According to persons who witnessed that shooting, Melville and Brown were among a group of men standing along the roadway in Canaan when they were approached by the armed men who turned their guns on them and opened fire, killing them on the spot. The other persons fled in panic. Melville's mother, Trishon Henderson, who was at the shooting scene when the news went into the community, broke down in tears while describing her son as a good person who was in no way a troublemaker. Romain is a good somebody, him not trouble nobody, him love everybody, him was no troublemaker, said the tearful mother. Him never deserved he did so. When contacted for an update on the status of the police's investigations, Superintendent Aaron Samuels, the officer in charge of operations in St. James, was reluctant to provide any details, though he was seen at the location. I'm still on ops in the area and I cannot talk right now, Samuels told the news. Subsequent efforts to reach him were unsuccessful as he did not respond to calls to his cellular phone. Since the start of the year, a total of 61 persons have been killed across St. James 
which has also recorded three double murders over the past 10 days. Student in custody following stabbing at a school in St. Anne. A student of a but not a Gallimore High School in St. Anne is in police custody, facing charges arising from the stabbing of a 14-year-old at the institution on Tuesday. The injured student suffered a collapsed lung and is hospitalized in serious condition. It is reported that about 11.30 a.m., the two students were involved in a dispute when the 14-year-old was stabbed in the chest. Manchester residents are fearful as women being targeted in house break-ins. Residents of Don Robin and Balvinie Heights in Mandeville, Manchester, are fearful following reports of breaking and entering at the homes of women and the sexual assault of a woman in the area last week. According to the residents, over the last three weeks, armed men have been preying on vulnerable women in the communities. One robbery victim who requested anonymity spoke with the news on Tuesday. The woman said that she was robbed of cell phones, cash and other items by two men who broke into her house last week. I did not that with the grill. I was safe. They cut the grill and cut the grill and they come in so fast. They take out the meter. So, so to me, it doesn't matter what house you are in, you are not safe. And the hours that they are coming in is when the neighborhood is dead, it's no sound. They come in in the hours when people are deep in their sleep. That is the time that they are attacking. Fred Williams, a justice of the peace and a community member, said he has been providing counseling to the victims. Mr. Williams suggested the establishment of more neighborhood watches and the citizens associations to help reduce these incidents. Last July, a series of similar incidents occurred in the neighboring communities of Hatfield and Hopeton. There was one reported victim of rape while others reported being robbed of personal and household belongings. According to the latest crime statistics, Manchester has recorded 29 robberies and 53 break-ins since the start of the year. Opposition challenges government regarding importation of onions. The government has been asked to clarify previous declarations regarding the importation of onions. Onion farmers in St. Thomas staged several days of protest in March over a lack of markets for their onions and chided the government for importing onions to the detriment of local farmers. The Ministry of Agriculture denied that it had given the green light for the importation of onions. But during his contribution to the sectoral debate in the House of Representatives on Wednesday afternoon, opposition spokesman on agriculture, Luthan Cousins, challenged the government on the claims, saying he had evidence that onions had been imported. I did some research, and I have in my possession, Madam Speaker, an arrival notice dated the 6th of March, 2023, this year, speaking to the arrival of the vessel, Cape Corfu, I'll give the details, registered under the flag of Cyprus and signifying the arrival of several containers of Dutch yellow onions. Who are the Who Well, the ministry can answer that question. The minister owes the farmers an apology, Madam Speaker. Yes. His comments caused the Agriculture Minister Pernell Charles Jr. to stand on a point of order. Mr. Charles argued that Mr. Cousins was putting forward statements that are misleading the country. What the Speaker is presenting is not factual and he is, uh, he is putting forward statements that are misleading the country. I can't sit here and allow him to do so. For the country's benefit, the fact that a ship came in on a particular date cannot lead to what he is saying. What the speaker is saying and what he's connecting is not true. He's suggesting that because a ship came in, it means that the ministry gave permits on that time and he cannot to say so. It's wrong. It's false. Mr. Cousins was allowed to complete his presentation without having to withdraw the statement. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.